Okay, let's continue. What do you think, Holmes? What do you think, Holmes? This pearl is too small. It is not in its place here. This pearl is a different color. This pearl is a different color. Okay. This pearl is too small. It is not in its place here. These three pearls are of poor quality. Too many defects. This necklace is a fake. This is nothing but a vulgar copy, and at a glance it would appear that the forger has intended for it to be seen as such. How could we have been fooled by such a blatant imitation? I don't understand. Yes, how is it possible? Holmes, do you have a theory about this? I have absolutely no idea. You insisted that I examine the necklace, and I have done so. Now it is important that I keep my appointment. I'm sure, Inspector, that you will throw some light on this affair. Holmes... You may accompany me, Watson, if you care to do so. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll keep you informed as to my inquiries. Goodbye, Inspector. You mentioned a bishop, didn't you? Are we going to his home? Yes, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. I put his address on our map of London on my desk. Would you get it for me, please? All right, Holmes. The work table, where Holmes analyzes things. Holmes's homemade analyzer. I have found your map. The police? Already? How did you know? May we see the Bishop of Knightsbridge? Yes. Yes, of course. But... come in. What has happened, Reverend? What? I... I don't know. It was last night, I think. I only just arrived. And I have made this macabre discovery. My God. How horrible. I haven't called anyone. How did you know that? Holmes! Look! The bishop, appallingly mutilated. How dreadful! Mutilated! And killed! He was such a good man. How could anyone be so brutal? Look at him. He is barely recognizable now. How could any of God's children be responsible for... They were evidently unworthy children, Reverend. Now do please try to calm yourself and focus, because we will need your assistance. Do you have any idea as to the motive behind this? I haven't had time to do an inventory, but nothing appears to have been stolen. And anyway, His Excellency didn't own anything of great value. I don't know what else I can tell you. Note this down, please, Doctor. Doctor? But you aren't the police? No, Reverend. I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We are here at the request of the Bishop. In that case, I must ask you to leave, and not to touch anything. I must get in touch with the authorities without further delay. Uh, Reverend, when the inspectors of Scotland Yard find themselves at a dead end, which they quite often do, I assure you, then they turn to me for help. If you allow us to continue our investigation, then you shall have the answers to all of your questions. Out of the question! I don't even know you! I'm going to call the police, whether you like it or not. It would be better for everyone, Reverend, if you kept your temper. Watson, are you taking notes? This affair promises to be a complex one, therefore we must not overlook the slightest detail. Yes, Holmes. I am keeping a meticulous set of notes. I have created a very clever deduction board. One thing we can be sure of at the moment is that this crime was not for gain. The Reverend has informed us that nothing valuable was stolen, and indeed it would seem that the Bishop had nothing of any worth to take. Very good, Watson. Do continue.
Okay, let's check everything. A broken bottle of whiskey. However, the Bishop of Knightsbridge was known for his sobriety. This stove is filled to overflowing. There is blood on this paperweight. A bottle of whiskey. I can make out fingerprints stained with blood and dirt. It would seem that the brutes who tortured the bishop to death were intoxicated with alcohol. The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. His forearms have been ripped. Pieces of skin have been torn off. What do you think, Watson? I'd say that he was eaten alive. Yet I've noticed a curious degeneration of the skin tissue around the wounds. The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. A piece of rope that was used to tie up that poor man. His stomach is covered in scratches. Quite evidently, they weren't made recently. So, these wounds were not made by his murderers. You can see by his expression that he suffered terribly. His mouth is covered in blood, and I can make out strips of skin between his teeth. My dear friend, everything points to this man having gnawed at his own forearms. That's unbelievable, Holmes. His chest has been lacerated, I would say, with a very sharp and fine blade. This poor man was tied just below the knees. To stop him from walking, certainly, but mostly to free his feet. A finger. Apparently, it doesn't belong to the Bishop of Knightsbridge. How dreadful! His feet have been burned. Hmm. My first impression is that he wears a size 9 shoe. You! But what does it matter, Holmes? These burns are terrible. My God, Holmes, this man was horribly tortured. Something is missing here. Oh, yes? And what might that be? His shoes. Watson, his shoes are missing. A broken file and blood near the neck. What a strange smell. Whew. Chemical components, I think. It's a silice designed to bruise the person wearing it. The bishop wore it as repentance. A whip? No, it is a discipline for self-flagellation. This very pious man must have had the habit of mortifying his flesh as a means of repentance. This metal rod is for fastening the chilies. I am missing some information. Reverend, I'm missing something, an implement with which to open this chest. Could you tell me where to find it? 
No, go to the devil! What are you afraid of, Reverend? What is inside the chest? I'm not afraid of anything. In fact, I do have the necessary implements, but if I have to give them to anyone, it will be to a representative of the law and no one else. Okay, we'll check everything before making any suggestions. I cannot leave now. Oh, okay. Watch where you're putting your feet, Watson. Have you noticed these prints upon the ground? Well, yes, those muddy marks. See here, Watson, footprints can often provide more vital information than the very best of informants. Yes, if you know how to make them talk, that is. It's child's play, Watson. We will begin by excluding the contaminating prints, which are yours and mine from where we came in, and those of our dear Reverend, who was so impatient to call the police. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. This print came from an expensive pair of shoes, and it seems recent. It is not a laborer's shoe. A fragment of stone. Peculiar. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. Hobnail boots. Hobnail boots. Size 9. Size 9. Size 9 and a half. Size 9. Size nine and a half. Size nine. Hmm. Okay, I'll let's say three. Perfect. We now know that there were three crooks. Strange but true. One of the crooks was wearing a different pair of shoes when he left here. Therefore we have three men who came in and left again. But one of them was wearing a different pair of shoes from the ones which he came in with. So, all we have to do is look for a workman who likes Italian shoes. Okay. A surgical scalpel covered in blood. There isn't any doubt the wounds on the bishop were administered with this scalpel. Closed. The veranda door hasn't been forced. Strange. Reverend, might I have the key? No! You have no authority here. Let me call the police. Perhaps we should listen to him, Holmes. Perhaps you should let me get on with this, Watson.
This door has not been forced. Where does it lead, Reverend? To His Excellency's room. There is just a mattress and a stool. The bishop's bedroom? It is very austere. Nothing in particular here. The picture of Peregrine Maitland, commander of the infantry brigade of Her Majesty's guards at Waterloo. The Bishop of Knightsbridge has the same name as his ancestor, an illustrious family. Let us look at our deduction board, Watson. Okay, let's see. Wait, wait. Okay. Uh. Okay, let's see this. Okay. It is evident that the Bishop of Knightsbridge's killers were after something specific, and that they did not find it. Reverend, I shall ask you one more time. Open the chest. The item they were seeking must still be inside. It is unlikely that they will let this matter rest. They will most certainly return to finish what they started. And I am telling you once more, the chest is locked and shall remain so. Very well. We have reached an impasse. You are a stubborn man, Reverend. Watson, accompany our friend to the police station and return with Inspector Baines. Baines and no one else. I shall wait for you here. Go. Alone at last. Now I can continue my investigation. Okay. I need something. These traces reveal that the thieves tried to open this chest. Impossible to open it. I am missing some information. I am missing... Okay.
Okay, I'll stop here for a moment, we'll uh, try to figure out what actually I'm supposed to do. Thanks for watching.